All right. Good morning. Welcome to the Sweet Talk. Today is Tuesday, August 13th, 2019. And I am your host, Kim Matina. And today I have on my show the mate, the most famous person. If you follow Google for Education, he is one of my um, EdTech go-to guys, especially for his tips on using um, Google Drawings, Mr. Tony Vincent. Welcome to the show. Uh, hey, it's great to be here. Oh, I'm so thankful that you um, came on and, and is willing to share, you know, a lot of your knowledge and how we can use Google Drawings to spark creativity in the classroom. So why don't you give a little um, introduction of who you are, where you're from, and then we'll dive right into it. Ah. Well, I live in Council Bluffs, Iowa, and it's a uh, fair time here, state fair time in Iowa. So we just got back from that. Uh, I am uh, currently an education consultant, uh, self-employed on a mission to help teachers uh, however I can. And uh, previous to that, I started teaching fifth grade in the late 90s. And uh, one of the things that I, that I was fortunate to be a part of is that I went one-to-one -one with students in 2001. And uh, the, our device back then were, were Palm Pilots. So, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then uh, I was, my school's tech coach. Then I was uh, self-employed for 12 years, getting to work with teachers in just about every state. Uh, then I decided I'd go back into the classrooms. So I went uh, and taught fifth grade for the 2018-2019 school year. Um, worked in a one-to-one -one Chromebook classroom, and it was awesome. The teachers are awesome, and uh, it gave me some really good perspective and, and even more ideas in, in ways that I can help teachers currently. Yeah, definitely. I think that's um, key right there is like when you're really in the classroom dealing with the students, you see the needs and you see what you can, um, what you can do to be helpful. And that's kind of like what I try to do as well with this show, because I think that, you know, we all need help. We all can learn from each other and why not share it? So why don't you talk about, um, you know, what you're going to go over today with Google Drawings. I'm really curious to see. I, I am a, a person who uses Google Drawings a lot, um, and I'm, I'm curious to see how uh, you can um, spark creativity um, with it, with your ideas, and then um, hopefully move that into the direction where, you know, teachers and students can use that app because I don't think it's a well used app. I don't, it's part of the, the core suite, but it's like a hidden gem. Yeah. Uh, so in, in my one-to-one -one Chromebook classroom, we of course used Google Classroom um, as, our, as our digital classroom. And uh, it turns out that probably over half of the kinds of assignments that I would distribute to students would be in Google Drawings. Uh, uh, for, for many reasons, and I, I get asked the question a lot, well, why would you choose Google Drawings over, say, Google Slides? Because they are super similar, and that is a very valid question because they, they are almost identical in that they have the same drawing tools. Uh, you can, it has the same sharing, commenting. Uh, the, the big difference for me is that my students' Chromebook screens were kind of small, and so if they were working on something that needed just one slide, Google Drawings was ideal for that because Google Drawings doesn't show the film strip along the side. You don't have to worry about the presenter notes at the bottom. Like it, it just makes everything on their screen bigger. And if they're just using one, one page, one slide, then Google Drawings just was easier to work with. Um, so that was, that was the main reason, but pretty much everything that we did in Google Drawings, we could do in Google Slides. Um, one thing that I found a little bit easier in Google Drawings is you, know, you have your main canvas, that area in the middle, and then you have that light gray space all around. Uh, Google Drawings is a lot friendlier to that gray space because you can scroll left or right. So you can put items off the canvas, extra directions, and you could really scroll all you want to the left and right. Um, if you do that in Google Slides, if you scroll too far, it takes you to the next slide. And it's really hard, hard to access that content that's off the slide. So because Again, I use just one slide often, and I like to put content on the left and right sides of the canvas. Uh, Google Drawings was really great for that. 
That's actually a good point because I think people f- like, I get the impression at least from people that I encounter, uh, interact with that they don't use the, the gray area around the canvas because they think it's kind of like a no, a no, no tech zone or whatnot. But um, you're right. I'm glad that you did mention that because that is extra space there that you can use for directions or maybe for a legend or, um, you know, different symbols that you're, that you're using in your, on your canvas. So um, I, I think I, I, I'm glad that you brought that up. Um, I actually just created, uh, I use Google Drawings as an activity board. So I create my table in there and then on the sides in the gray area, I put my directions and then little symbols like check marks so that the user can just drag the check mark over into the table. So yeah, I mean, that's, that's a great tip right there from Tony. Use the, the, the borders around the canvas as more space for your content. Yeah. And yeah, you can put extra materials. And, you know, one thing that is a little bit lacking in Google drawings is if you go to the insert menu, there's not a spot where you can insert a video. Um, a workaround to that is to actually go to Google slides, insert a video you know, from YouTube or your Google drive, and it's sitting there, just copy it from that slide and then go to Google drawings and paste it wherever you'd like. And then it works just fine. <laughs> so You mean paste the link or paste no, the... Just, the video. So you have the video thumbnail in the Google slide after you've inserted it. Um, just copy that. Just, you just you know, uh, control C. So have, it, have that video selected after it's embedded. Control C. And then in Google Drawings, control V and the video's there. It'll play just fine. Uh, even though oh, that's interesting. Google has left out the insert video option, you can still insert videos into Google Drawings just with a, a little help of, from Google Slides. Yeah, well, that's that's good to know. But aren't you able to put a link in Google Drawings to a video as well? Oh, yeah, well? You, can, you can hyperlink in there. The embedding, though, just means that they can click play and they don't have to open up a new tab. It just plays in the in the little uh, window that is right there in your document. Ah, uh, okay, I see now. Okay, all right. Well, that, oh, wow, that's good. I'll have to check that out. <laughs> and that's a yeah, good it's kind tip. Of funny. It doesn't feel like it should work, but it does. Yeah, that's a good tip. I have to check that out. Um, wow. Okay. Um, anything else? Like, so like when I create Google Drawings um, and content in there, I usually download, um, sometimes I download um, as images. I download the file as an image, which is nice. Um, but how do you see uh, students using it in, in the classroom? Well, <clears throat> we use it for a variety of things, um, including graphic organizers. But then also I had a focus in my classroom for students to kind of become their own artists. And they ended up making their own icons and clip art, which led to making flow charts. And they could do all this stuff from scratch. But I'll back up and we'll talk about the, 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 le- the less exciting part there. And that is, uh, it, it's great for graphic organizers. Uh, I would give out templates in Google Classroom for students to copy and then they can fill in. And I oftentimes had things off to the side, like you said, check marks. I would have, we had these readers and there were four of them that they might be reading that week. So I've just put screenshots of the covers and they can drag which one they read onto the spot on the canvas and then fill out the you know, it's problem solution or um, you know, character uh, conflict kind of uh, graphic organizers that they could fill out. But, so when, you, when you're using it with your students, do you find your students um, at like looking for another page to add to their content or do they um, just kind of resize the canvas that they're working on or do they create a new drawing to like, you know, add to what they previously uh, did? Well, I don't want super long answers, right? You know, summarizing and being able to be concise is an important skill. So I, I actually came up with a protocol that we used where um, I would usually use some sort of brightly colored background. Um, didn't matter the color, but then the, I would have them type into text box or uh, into shapes. Like, so any shape you add, so you add a rectangle. I always made that have a white fill. And then when they click in it, they can type. 
So instead of using text boxes, they just type into shapes. And I would make that shape and I, I would uh, make it the, the font and the size that I wanted. And I asked students not to change that. So if their answer couldn't fit in the box size that I had, they had to revise their answer. Um, if there were times where, you know, student length of their answers would really vary, then, then Google Drawings wouldn't be great for that. That's better for Google Docs because you have that expandable text area that they could type for as long as they'd like. But for graphic organizer kind of things and the activities I had students do in Google Drawings, I didn't want them to type forever. So the, the size of the box kind of limited how much you know, I wanted them to Thanks. actually write there. Yeah, now well, that's a good point too, because if you're just looking for a specific um, information, just create like a one pager with specifics on it. Google Drawings would be a great app to use for that because it is limiting the student in that respect. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good point. And then they, they can, they get a quick visual overview too, because they can see, oh, where did I leave white spaces? And if there's an empty white box, it means they aren't done yet, that they left something blank. And then when, when the students are done with their, um, with their project, are they sharing it in Google Classroom with you? Or are they downloading it as an image and sharing it in that way? Like, how are you? Oh, no, they, um, just, they just go to Google Classroom and click turn in. Turn in. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because sometimes, you know, like, I, I don't know, I use it for different things, but I, I do like the ability of having um, the option to download it as an image, you, you know? know? We do that sometimes if, they, if they're designing, um, let's say, like, the, the rock cycle. They download it as an image and then put it on a padlet and put the image on a padlet so everybody can see each other as at a quick overview. Okay. Now, do you find that it mean, do you, what, what grade are you working with elementary school? Yeah. Fifth grade. Fifth grade. So there's no really, there's not really a big learning curve for them with it. Right. You don't find oh, that they're struggling through it. Right. No, <laughs> no. See, not, to, not to fill out an, an organizer. No, they, they yeah, <laughs> they catch on pretty quickly and they, and they know how to maneuver through the, the tools and all that, the tool, toolbars and everything. Right. Yep. Yep. And, and they love Google slides. I mean, they would, uh, indoor, we had a lot of indoor recesses, we had a lot of rain in Iowa this, this last year and it, half the kids would just be making things in Google slides and sharing it with each other during indoor recess because they, it's a tool they just love. Yeah. I think, and I think too, like, it's not, I mean, I could speak for Google drawings, like it's not used as often as docs or even slides, you know, it's like I said, it's a hidden gem. <laughs> yeah. You and know? if, you, if you, the exact same tools are in Google slides and drawing, so you can move between the two, it, it, you'll just notice, oh, there's a few things missing in Google drawings because you don't have multiple canvases. Yeah. And I honestly, I created um, an interactive, um, like an interactive drawing for, um, as a guide for uh, seventh grade science. And so they had, they took like the animal cell or the plant cell and they kind of made, they labeled each part and then they found links to refer to the parts. So it ended up becoming like an interactive drawing file for that plant cell or animal cell. And, and the students really enjoyed it because it was something different and they came up with the information. They found the information. You know, and they had to find um, whether the information was, you know, reputable or, or not as well. But, you know, it, it kind of gave them a little bit more freedom to pick and choose what they wanted to include in, in there. Yeah. And so some tips with doing that sort of thing, because Google Drawings is great for these like image maps or hotspot images, kind of like ThingLink, but you can do it in Google Drawings because you can hyperlink pictures, you can hyperlink shapes, you can hyperlink text. Um, and if you share it so that anybody can view it, when you click, you'll see the link, you'll click, then you got to click again to the link. What's really awesome is if you take the shareable link and change in the URL, the slash edit to slash preview, then anybody who follows that link with slash preview at the end of that shareable link, they don't see the Google drawing tools. In fact, you can't really tell it's Google drawing unless you look at the URL and the, and the icon. Um, it's just the image. 
but it keeps all the hyperlinks. So then as you move your mouse across, it will turn from the pointer to the hand. And if it's a hand, you're like, oh, that's a hyperlink. So you can find either hidden spots or you can highlight certain spots of an image and then have that open something in a new tab. And it does it in one click instead of having to do two if you're just in the kind of edit or view mode. So when you do it, when you change the URL to preview, it actually displays it in full screen, correct? Yep, yep, it makes it, it blows it up to take up the, the full width or height of the, uh, the tab that you have open. Okay, uh, that's, that's, that's interesting. I didn't do that and uh, I, I don't think I really knew about that little hack that, uh, that you um, posted about, um, but I, I can, I never really thought about using the preview on the, on the Google drawn file. I just kind of make it public and use the public link, you know? Yeah. Oh, it looks, it looks crisp it looks and clear. I have one like that. I have some of my video equipment and I took a, a picture of you know, my home studio here. And then I put little labels on everything and then link them to the product on Amazon, but you can't tell it's Google drawings. It just looks like this picture with these clickable links on it. Wow. Okay. Oh, wow. Well, see, that's another, another good tip, like just to change the URL to preview. And then it gives that whole different impression. It, it doesn't even, you're telling me it doesn't even look like a Google drawn file. No. So if you're making, say, you know, a newsletter or a flyer that you just want to send out online, you could download it as a PDF and all that. But something simple is get the shareable link, change slash edit in the URL to slash preview. And it's just, it just shows the image in the browser. So it'll look great. Um, and you, know, you don't have all those toolbars and confusing things on there. It's just, just whatever's on your canvas. So it doesn't include the stuff that's off the side. It's just your canvas presented as an image and then any hyperlinks are, are still there too. Okay. Now let me ask you this, Tony, before we wrap up. Do you have any resources on um, size recommendations for Canvas in Google Drawing? So for example, do you have anything set? What is the sp specific um, YouTube header size supposed to be if I'm creating it in Google Drawings? Like, do you have resources on, on what size the canvas needs to be for different I, apps? I used to, that changes a lot. So if I was to make a YouTube header, I would just Google, Google it. Here's okay. It's like the Google or the, the Google classroom header size has changed too. So yeah, if you Google and get the, get the dimensions, you know, they'll be presented in pixels. Then in Google drawings, you can go to file page setup and then specify that that size and pixels. Cause sometimes I feel like I'm, I don't know, like I'm doing things in Google drawings and then I download the image, especially for headers and like forms and stuff. And my images are blurry, you know, and I, uh -huh. I just don't understand what I'm doing wrong. Like yeah. I go, well, I go into the yes. page setup and, mm -hmm. and everything, it could be that, or I don't, think it's my images because when I actually look at my image, it's, they're not blurry. It's like after I download them from drawings, it gets blurry when I put them in like my YouTube header or my Google forms header or my classroom header. It's, I don't yeah, know. If you specified pixels, that shouldn't be a problem, but I know blurriness is a problem for me. Like if you just use the default size that you get when you start a new Google drawing document, it's not very high resolution. It'll look great as you're editing, but then when you download as an image, your fonts are kind of blurry and your shapes are kind of blurry because their default size is fairly low resolution. Oh, so it's not me. I'm not going crazy. No, no. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you recommend? How do we, how do we get rid of that? What's a workaround for that? Oh, I, I often go into file page setup and then I go to, I, I usually work in pixels, but it doesn't matter what, what unit you're using and just double both numbers. That'll, that'll. Oh yeah. Double or quadruple the resolution. Um, and then when you download it, it will look better. So you're saying double. So if it's 250 by 250, double that to 500 by 500 in yep. pixels? Pixels or if it's an inch, yeah, whatever's there, just double the numbers. Okay. I think by default, it shows you inches um, or shows me inches, but. Um, I think it, I think it does. Yeah. 
But okay. Also, if I find a specific one, like a, a YouTube thumbnail is the HD video, or if I'm inserting something into a video, I always make it um, 1920 by 1080 pixels because that's the size of HD video. Okay. All right. Well, th that's, that's great information right there. Um, I know that's very helpful for me. And so I'm hoping that, you know, some, somebody else will find it helpful as well. But you gave so much great information and great tips today about Google Drawings. Um, thank and, you. and I think when, when people hear drawings, they think that, oh, well, do you need a stylist? Do you need that? Well, it's the type of drawing more with shapes. And so, as I said earlier, my, my students, like we had one of these each week that I call a shape gram and I would give them that we started real simple with a picture of a house and their, their job was to recreate what I drew. So they'd have to find the shape. You know, there's a triangle roof, there's a window, there's a door and find the shapes and then, um, you know, change borders, change fills to, to make it match mm -hmm. mine. And then every week we got a little harder and my, my fifth graders got a little frustrated because they're like, I don't know how you did this. And. I said, well, at last resort, you can go to my original, ungroup it, and look at the shapes to see what I did. Because if you look at Google Drawings or Google Slide Shape Menu, there's some interesting shapes there, um, which you can use if you're trying to draw like your own clip art and that. So every week they get a little harder, a little harder, a little harder. And after my students kind of recovered from their frustration, they were <laughs> able to replicate anything that I put there. And then they were able to make their own clip art, you know, so they, they want to make their own banana. They could do it. Um, by the end of the year, we, we were, my school is an, uh, an international baccalaureate school. So fifth grade does this exhibition, which is a, a really big uh, project where they research and take action. And every single group used Google drawings and their skills of making their own clip art one way. Wow, that's awesome. My students even were able to make themselves. We all made ourselves as our own avatars using the drawing tools inside of Google Drawing. So they had their own like avatar version of themselves. And they even included that in some of the brochures and things that they made for that. Oh, that's cool. And, um, some made stickers that, uh, you know, that was just all them. Like they, they made, they had a dog and a policeman on it and a star and the words like they, they made that all themselves. And so um, I just love that they became such creative communicators. And one of the tools they, they used a lot was Google drawings. So what were some of the advanced features um, or even some of the basic features really quick that the students used and as they started, you know, they use different tools to accomplish those things. So really quick, what were some of the, the features in Google Drawings that the kids used? Like, you know, you said the shape tool, mm -hmm. the crop yeah, tool, and, I'm and sure. When they, when, they, when they make shapes, they uh, often group them together so they can move and resize multiple things together. Okay. They really got into the curve line and the polyline tools. And those are tools kind of more freeform. You can make any shape you want. So they use that a lot to trace maps um, and to even kind of trace themselves as they were making the avatars using, using those um, line tools. Uh, they, <laughs> one, of our, one of our shape grams was a fireplace and it was made of these bricks. And so they really liked using the alignment tools and learning about distributing. So you select um, a group of objects that you want either in a row or a column evenly spaced. Uh, and they don't have to start out evenly spaced, but when you select them and then choose distribute horizontally or vertically, they'll just instantly space out evenly. And so they're able to make, you know, this brick fireplace and all the bricks are lined up just the way they want because they had mastered that arrange menu with the distribute and the alignment tools in there. Oh, wow. Okay. That's, that's great. I'm glad that you even mentioned all of that because, you know, sometimes those tools go unnoticed as well, especially when you're creating any type of graphic, because those little details are the ones that you have to perfect so that there's no, um, you know, no, no, you're not second guessing what you did. You know, I know um, when I'm doing images and creating headers, I'm always looking to make sure that those small details are very um, perfect and that they're all lined up and they're the same size and they're grouped and everything so that yeah. it's easier to manipulate when you have to edit the, the drawing. 
Yeah, I tell I tell people a lot that it's kind of you know, graphic design and these things. It's kind of like grammar, right? People could still understand you if you don't have a comma in the right place or don't capitalize the right thing. But man, it's a better reflection on you if things are <laughs> correct. You got that comma, you got the capitalization, you have the alignment, you have the right, you know, your fonts are consistent. Like it, it's another way of presenting ourselves through communication. Yeah, through through graphics and art, really. Yeah. Yeah. So if I could put a plug in, uh, I uh, lead a class called Classy Graphics, and we use Google Drawings and a little bit of Google Slides. And I take teachers through our, our very first week is actually exploring that arrange menu and pretending that we have a grid across our documents and things line up to that. It's amazing. Like even just in, it's a six week online class, but even in that first week, people realize, oh, now I get it. And just, <laughs> just a few tweaks can really help your designs look more professional. And then, then we do other things. We work with images. We make our own sticky notes, which is pretty fun. Oh, that's cool. Print on sticky notes. We make some social media posts. And then the last week is a lot of the things that we've just talked about is how to make learning activities inside there. So um, some simple fill in the blanks to some drag and drop activities and everybody in the class shares each other's connect or each other's uh, creations. And we comment on each other. We use the commenting feature and you get so many great teaching ideas while practicing and, and checking out graphic design. So it's, it's pretty fun. Yeah, no, I, I actually read about that on your, um, on your website or someone, someone shared it on Twitter and I was reading about it. So I actually want you to, um, put the link for your class, um, in the show notes so that I can put it into the weeklet as well and see, you know, maybe someone from, um, the sweet talk audience will, you know, take your class. Yeah, actually, love, I was thinking about that. taking yeah. the class as well. September 10th. <laughs> I was thinking about it too. <laughs> the cool thing about the class too is I never take it offline. So um, while a lot of people do it week by week with me, I make a, an instructional video every week. And um, but some people, you know, it's the beginning of the school year. There's going to be a busy time. That if you fall behind, or even if you do the class even later, it's always there for people. Um, yeah, so that's nice. It's fun to go through it as a cohort, and we I answer questions from Flipgrid, and I. Uh, oftentimes duplicate somebody's creation and show them a few tweaks and then share my, my tweaks with, with the whole class. So you can see, Oh, if you change this color, look how this changes that, or how about move this around. And uh, it just opens up a lot of thinking too, that where, you know, as busy teachers, we don't, we just are happy to get something together. And if we can just take a, learn a few more tips and techniques, it can look even better. Yeah, definitely. And help and it'll help you, you know, make it better for the next time as well, you know? Yeah. So those little tricks, you know, make our workflow a little bit more efficient. And then we're able to pass that information on. I, I definitely agree. You know, any little tip can help. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And a lot of little tips together can, can add up some, to some big changes. This is true. <laughs> <laughs> I already learned so much from you today also. So. <laughs> oh, awesome. Well, thanks for being on, Tony. I know, um, oh, you know, pleasure. you said you had to, um, you know, make it quick. So we tried to wrap it up a little bit quicker than normal. Um, so let me just share my screen real fast. Um, all right, let's see here. All right, Tony, can you see my screen? Uh, oh, yes, it's on my other monitor here, yeah. <laughs> all right. So um, you can visit the sweettalk.com, the S-U-I-T-E talk.com, and um, you can actually check out the show on the episode and podcast uh, page. It'll be listed here, and it will also be listed on the homepage as well. Um, you can also subscribe to uh, my YouTube channel and fill out this contact form, and I will send you a promo code for free 30-day trial of Screencastify. So check that out. Um, if you'd like to be a guest on my show, you can also fill out the guest inquiry form. Uh, I will get back to you with that. I am scheduling for the fall already. So um, 
yeah, it's been busy and I'm very thankful for all of my guests that come on. But um, I, I learn something new all the time. And this show has definitely um, helped me connect with other educators and help other educators as well. So um, I thank you for being on, Tony. And it's been a pleasure meeting you. And thank you for troubleshooting with me this morning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that's what technology is about, problem solving. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I warned everybody, hey, I'm using Zoom. It's my second time. Be patient. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, thank you for tuning in guys and I'll see you next time. Thank you.